work. As a Western student of Krishnamacharya's, how have you been able to integrate his Brahmin-based teaching with the body practices that cultivates union, which you've said means a union of opposites? Well, I was very fortunate. It was a gift to be with Krishnamacharya in my life, in my early life. And I came from my background, which was, you know, eclectic universities and you know, Western scientific education, the ability of the, you know, empirical mind to investigate, you know, analyze uh, the scholarly approach to information. And I was in the midstream of that in the 60s when I met Krishnamacharya. And so I was able to bring that to his teaching and I feel uh, receive the essence, you know, as it's most pertinent to contemporary life. So I feel you know, my work is to bring the great tradition into contemporary life in a way that is truly useful that can be understood. In a way, it's, a, it's to uh, interpret, translate the Krishnamacharya. You know, Deskachaya, even the son of Krishnamacharya, is saying, you know, <laughs> without my, uh, without this um, imposition of uh, culture. Uh, my father's work would have been understood much more clearly. You know. And that uh, Deskachar himself did uh, much to interpret, interpret his father's teaching. You know. Without Deskachar, Krishnamacharya would have been in a bit of a cloud for us. You know. So, you know, both those gentlemen made it clear that the lineage of Krishnamacharya is not a biological one at all. Although there's something special about that, you know, the father-son. It's a historic arrangement in India. And uh, there's this, this idea of, you know, purity of, you know, being in the family, you know, close to the information. Uh, and with this tragedy around Kalstu, that is no longer. So um, I feel even more responsible now to use this uh, eclectic, empirical investigation of Krishnamacharya's work and bring it into form that is understandable and useful you know, without so, the cultural baggage. So how can we begin to heal um, the Western yoga world with situations like Kalstub, Deskachar, John, Freen, and as you've mentioned, even 70s Eastern teachers oh. that have come over. And the Catholic Church and, you know, secular, you know, politicians and, you know, <laughs> you know how it is. They're all brought to their knees through sexual misconduct and it's a vast aberration. The world of pornography is a vast aberration that, that comes out of sex denial, you know. It's the other side of that same sleazy coin, you know, deny sex and it comes out as gross negative ways. So that must be healed now. And as my teacher said, that yoga is the practical means, it's what you can actually do to be intimate with life, to enjoy your life as it's given. Right? And this is our work, to give this to the world in real ways. I say, real yoga for real people. You know, not this obsessive in position on yourself trying to get somewhere as if you're not somewhere, as if you're not the full-blown wonder of life already given, you know, as if you're not the extreme intelligence of life, the extreme function and the extreme beauty. You are that, you see, in the individuation that you are. Not to try to duplicate something else, not take on somebody else's ideas, somebody else's teaching, you know, but to be, to go your own way. And finally, allow that search to end and just enjoy what you are, this life pulsing in you, as you, and enjoy your intimacy with all arising conditions one to another. You know. So do we need to reframe the traditional teaching, or do we heal through the teaching? I think we heal through the teaching. There's something absolutely extraordinary that came out of our ancient people, you know, 
It's extraordinary gifts there, extraordinary examples, extraordinary, you know, saints and sages and avatars and yogis. Uh, but it's just not to duplicate, not to imagine that you have to be like them. You be like you. <laughs> no, you are you. Enjoy you. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your wonder. That, you know, it's a, it's a unitary movement of life. This life on earth, this mother earth, through yoga, we enjoy that connection to what we already have as individuals. You know, make love to life within and without. Enjoy your life. Don't try to be like another saint <laughs> and neglect your own wonder trying to be like somebody else. This is my, my great teacher, Yuji Krishnamurti, said, you know, human suffering is simply trying to be something other than what you are. So there must be an education given real yoga and allow people to see how easy it is to practice, to understand that yoga is the union of opposites in your own system, within and without, and enjoy that, you know, have, have your life. This is what Krishnamacharya wanted to do. He wanted everyone to know that there is a right yoga for every person, no matter who the person is. And yoga must be adapted to that individual according to your age, your health, your cultural background, you know, must be given in a way that's right for each individual. Adapt the yoga to the individual, not the individual to the yoga. This is what he said. Thanks so much, Mark. Sure. Thanks for asking me these beautiful